Ron's Place is a portal to many, many imaginary worlds. Just coming through that door and then you're in this kind of incredible world of many, many fantasies. Look at this, it was a rented flat. He had the ground floor. I think it was 1986 he moved in here. Welcome to the Egyptian themed hallway. So uh, you'll see every surface is covered. It has a paint effect on it like this antiquified door. Uh, the floor that he's uh, made a kind of diamond pattern on. Here we've got a lot, a lot of Egyptian goings on. And this is actually a portrait of Ron looking quite dapper in his trilby. We're not sure what this number is, whether if it was uh, for a friend or a Chinese takeaway or something, but I love the way it just kind of chalked onto the wall. This is his aquatic themed bathroom. When we first came in here, soon after Ron had died, oh, I mean, there was terrible, there was water pouring in through the ceiling. And we found this crumpled up. It seems to be some sort of uh, canoe. And there's a florist shop on the corner, and they used to save boxes or the flower boxes for Ron, and he'd make armour and canoes and all sorts with it. Uh, this is a collection of his videos. So he had very eclectic tastes. So everything from uh, historical epics to uh, Reggie Perrin, Only Fools and Horses. Would you like to come to the Georgian room? Ron was quite a romantic and uh, my nan always had lots of Mills and Boone novels around the house. I believe this, this was supposed to be based on Lady Hamilton, I think, but um, it seems to be one of, well, someone who was betrothed to Ron, apparently an Irish traveller woman. My granddad used to be there, but he got kind of, he had to move over and make way for his beloved. <laughs> I know, I mean, he, he did have some mental health issues and it was difficult for the family sometimes. He caused some kind of big dramas, shall we say. Now, Ron was always very resourceful and whenever we visited, he was always making something. When we were sorting through stuff in here after Ron had died, I found a postcard that he'd addressed to me saying, oh, next time you're home, I'd love to show you what I've been doing. But he put the wrong address on it and I never received it, so it was quite poignant, really. I knew that he did a lot of paintings and I wasn't necessarily crazy about a lot of them. What I didn't know was that he'd made this whole really integral environment. I'll take you into the lion room and show you what made me think we just can't possibly lose this place. So uh, you could barely see this when we first came in and this was done without the help of computers. When you see this in certain lights, it just looks so dramatic. And you'll see in here, there's a frying pan. He used to make pancakes in here. And he did make me some. It wasn't in this fireplace, but in another place he lived in. And he had this recipe for Roman army pancakes, like some kind of gruel. <laughs> and then the other thing he loved was making costumes. So uh, one of the reasons, you know, saying about family disputes, my nan, when she was, um, she, she had to go in a nursing home eventually and when she wasn't in such great health, Ron would kidnap her and bring her here. And my parents were, mum was absolutely, she just couldn't bear the thought of her in this place with just junk and dangerous things everywhere. But I know one time Ron was standing guard outside of this nursing home wearing this, having some kind of protest because she said he reckoned they weren't treating her properly. I don't know what the problem was. And he had a musket and he was standing there like an armed guard and just oh, causing all sorts of dramas. And I mean, one of the reasons that as an artist myself, I think it's really important to save and appreciate this kind of work is because we want to inspire other people who might never have done anything particularly creative and say, well, you know, you don't need money. Just use your imagination, be resourceful, just find stuff, repurpose stuff. So uh, I think Ron would be delighted to think that he was inspiring other people 
just to get so much pleasure from being creative. The listing store is incredible because, you know, it's not a typical kind of place to be listed. Usually you expect it to be a kind of historic building. And now to think it's the first grade two listed um, example of outsider art in Britain, in, in the UK. That means now we'll be able to apply for funding and it just gives us a bit more credibility really because if Historic England think it's worth saving, well, well it must be, mustn't it? <laughs> right, so would you like to come to the minor tour room now? Uh, when we uh, first came in here, this was probably the worst room. All sorts of things just piled up. You could barely even get in. What you couldn't see was this incredible fireplace, this minor tour. And this used to be operational as well. And I think there'd been water leaking in because he literally kind of you know, just bashed a hole in the wall to make this flu business. But this pram here, this was one of how we would um, convey his building materials. So um, he used to go to Wicks and get loads of sand and cement and they'd be kind of wheeled round in this pram. I remember Ron told my, my dad, I will not be ignored. And um, it's, it's very true. And he's not being ignored now, is he? 